headed to Boston Billiard. Just going to drive over the quick hour-long drive here from Cambridge, Mass to Nashua, New Hampshire for the Boston Billiards Club and Casino and restaurants and, you know, other amenities, I'm sure. I'm sure I will find out. I'm excited to head there. Never been. Let's get going. Here a little early at Boston Billiards just to get some footage and uh, hang out, fly the drone a bit, say hi to some school of cards folks, and uh, yeah, just get the lay of the land. We're gonna be playing some two five though pretty soon, and I'm excited, man. It's the first time I've like played poker outside of Vegas uh, to like go meet up people that I know in quite a bit, so uh, should be a good time. Pretty pumped for it. Let's get to it. I decided I was going to be in for the max at the 2-5 No Limit Meetup game that I was hosting. Perhaps my excitement was a little bit of foreshadowing because it was going to be a good session. I got there early and started hanging out with some of the School of Cards folks, had a good time with them. After checking out some of the sites around the rest of the casino, got into the game for $1,000 the max. It turns out straddles are allowed, double board bomb pots are allowed, Basically, everything's allowed at Boston Billiard. I played my first pot, settling in a straddle game for $10. I looked down at Ace-9 of hearts very early on and opened to 35 in the hijack. The cutoff makes the call, and the flop comes 8-4 deuce with one heart. I decide that this is a board I could see bet or check, but here I decide to check. He throws out a bet of 65, and it's going to be a pretty easy call with my two overs and backdoor. The turn is the four of hearts, which makes it pretty easy to continue. It also eliminates some of the pretty strong hands like sets. So when I check and he bets 100, smaller compared to the pot than the flop bet, we have a pretty easy decision to just call. I think that ace high will still be good here, pretty non-zero, and we could probably get the maximum when we get there by just calling here. We might get him off of some types of hands like other A's highs by check raising, but I don't think that's really necessary. On the river, deuce of spades. I check once more thinking my hand might actually be good here. He won't have a lot of 4X or deuce X that bets the flop and 8X often won't feel that comfortable to bet again. He bets 150 however, and we have to figure out if this is a bluff or value. Now, obviously some people will have a range here where they pick the same size, but just based on what I was looking at and the sort of de-escalating sizes that occurred from street to street in the hand, I just didn't really feel like it was strong all that often. And since the guy knew that I was there hosting the meetup game, I thought he might be trying to get one over on me. I make the call and he turns over king six somewhat sheepishly. That's not gonna be good. Ace high takes it down. We're off to a good start here. In this next hand, we're also playing a straddle pot for $10. I have the button with ace queen off and I bump it up to 40. The straddler three bets to 140 with only 225 behind. Now it's important to note that when a straddle is on, it basically halves the size of the game in terms of big blinds. It doubles the stakes, but makes us much less deeper stacked. So when he has about $360 to start the hand and the straddle is 10, we can kind of think about it like we're playing 36 blinds effective. And with this configuration, me in late position, him in the basically big blind, effective with the straddle in play, it's going to be a pretty easy just get it in. So I jam, he snaps, and we decide to show. He has ace king, and the board comes out pretty bad for us. It's king, king, queen, with uh, not much hope right away on the flop. Turn brick seals my fate. The river's another brick. Uh, kind of would have been funny if it was another queen just to rub it in, but they decide they're a little more polite than that at Boston Billiard. In this next hand, we start out with about 900 in the stack. The straddle is to $10 once again, and once again, I have ace nine of hearts. This time I'm in the small blind and it folds all the way around to me. I open to 40. The straddler makes it 140. This is starting to feel kind of familiar, but it's not the same opponent from the previous hand because, well, the positions aren't the same. He makes it 140 and I make the call. The flop comes 9-5 deuce with one heart, and at this point my opponent decides to continue the story and down bet to $100. 
Pretty standard sizing on a board like this in a three bed pot, but with top pair and a backdoor flush draw, I'm not going anywhere. I decided to make the call. Turn comes with seven of hearts, which is a pretty great card because we now pick up equity against anything we're behind. And even better news, he checks. We're now beating the vast majority of hands in his range, I would say, but there's no real reason to bet here. We're not really getting action from two overs, I don't think. And we kind of have the board locked up in the sense that he might catch up to one pair and we'll just be able to have a flush at some frequency. I decided to check it back. The river comes a six of hearts, our Jin card. And when he checks, I decide to do something a little bit tricky. I feel like he's gonna have over pairs non-zero, and while he doesn't have a call here too often, he's gonna have it sometimes. He even has a few slow played flushes. Plus, I don't think there are any hands in his range that would call a small size, but would actually believe me when I make this gigantic size, so I just end up going all in. It's 666. He actually snap calls. All in. Uh, wow, that's a crazy uh, with pocket eights, so we got super, super lucky here. Just the absolute perfect run out. Obviously we flopped well, but with the board running out exactly as it did, he pretty much has no choice but to call here, especially with the eight of hearts in hand. He didn't really think about it and felt kind of sheepish. I assured him I definitely would have called in his spot and it's pretty much just a cooler. Very unfortunate for him very fortunate for us. So as will be a theme with a lot of the players at Boston Billiard, this guy took getting stacked super well. I've been pretty impressed so far and ultimately I started to feel kind of silly about some of my old etiquette as a player because these guys were just really first class. Uh, took everything pretty well and I promised this guy I'd actually give him a shout out to his Twitch channel. He is Carp the Man. Go give him a follow. Uh, I think that his plan is to now get stacked by every poker vlogger and just get them to shout him out. So yeah, uh, I hope I get you a few extra followers, man. Uh, this guy actually also joined my Discord. So mandatory little plug here. If you're interested in joining a poker community that is full of uh, fun poker conversations as well as playing poker together, both on club games and on Color Up. Don't hesitate to join. It also has a lot of interesting discussion over there, depending on what you're interested in. So uh, yeah, really no reason not to join Discord. All right, back to the vlog. In this next hand, there's another straddle to 10. You're uh, probably sensing a theme at this point. And I open ace-queen offsuit in the cutoff to $40. The straddle calls. The flop comes 10-5 deuce with two diamonds, and we have the ace of diamonds. He checks. I decide to c-bet $35 since this is a board that not only will miss him quite a bit, but we can also barrel on a lot of cards. He calls 35 and the turn is the four of diamonds. He checks, I size up now to 85 and he calls once again. The river is the three of diamonds, he checks, and at this point I think that we can pretty much jam. He's got about 465 behind and with the same reasoning from the previous hand where he has to put us on really specifically kind of. Uh, the ace of diamonds to be worried with really strong diamonds in hand and a lot of the hands he would continue with here are a 10 with a good diamond I decide to just jam and he snaps I was actually a little confused because when we have this hand he shouldn't really have any snaps uh, I guess if there's like a straight flush available he can snap with that but that's pretty hard to have and he shouldn't really snap with the king of diamonds I think he should at least think about it but I figure I pretty much have the nuts I turn it over but he has ace king with the ace of diamonds. Oh, uh, actually it turns out I have ace queen with the queen of diamonds. Uh, yikes. The jam was for 465, so we take a big hit there. Probably still an okay line, but I don't really love overbetting at this point because it's kind of hard to get him to call with a jack of diamonds or worse to that size. That being said, we got to dust ourselves off. Try not to get in an uproar and just keep playing good poker. And yeah, screw you guys, just triple. Okay, this pot we're playing 1100 effective. The straddle is for $10. Yeah, that doesn't come off too often. I'm in the cutoff with 10 seven of diamonds and I make it 40. The straddle calls as they tend to do here and the flop comes 10 eight four with one diamond. He leads for $40 and with top pair and a weak kicker, I don't really think we have any options here. Pretty easy call. The turn is the six of diamonds, giving us a backdoor flush draw, which I don't think I've missed a single backdoor flush draw here yet. Uh, he leads 85, and again, really no choice here. I think with top pair, we have too much showdown value to raise, so I make the call. 
We also have a double gutter to go with it. So you could make some arguments for raising to get him off of a better 10, maybe some really weak over pairs, but I think that's unnecessary. The river is the eight of clubs and he leads for $150 now. Again, with kind of the sizing going on here, it feels like we might have to call. Um, it's kind of unfortunate though, because in this line, it feels much more like he just has it. First of all, he's led every street, so he's really just saying he has a hand. But at the same time, it's kind of hard to put him on things. I think that weaker top pairs might not do this for value, and he shouldn't really have an eight too often. I decided to call, and of course, he has ace eight, uh, because this lead is kind of weird, but it does actually make sense with his exact holding. It's one of the strongest eights, and he can certainly get value from worse, particularly on this exact runout. He happens to get there, and we just have to suck it up and move on. We rebuy for 500, and we're in for about 1k in the next hand, which for some reason I don't have notes on. Moving on, we must have lost that hand because we're $800 effective now in our first double board pawn bot where something interesting happens for us. The boards are jack 10, 6, and ace, ace, 7, and it checks through. The turn is a queen of hearts and four of spades, bringing backdoor flush draws on both boards. The big blind leads for 100. I call on the button with my king queen of clubs. By the way, it's a double board bomb pot, not a double board PLO bomb pot. They're, they're pretty different. Try to keep up. The river comes a nine of diamonds and an ace. He checks. I decided to bet 400 since even though I have one side pretty much locked up, if he has the other side, I'm in pretty good shape to get him to fold now and just scoop the whole thing. He folds and shows us nine eight. So he was never really going to be able to call here. And we were in fact, it looks like scooping both boards unless I'm mistaken. But uh, it's still nice to take it down and kind of have my reasoning validated here, even if he just didn't have it this time. In this next hand, I'm in the straddle for $10, trying to keep the theme rolling. And the big blind, who's a quiet guy with basically all the chips, raises to $40. He's been here since before the meetup game started, and you can kind of tell by his demeanor he takes the game seriously. I decide to call with king six of diamonds, and we go heads up to the flop, jack five four. There's one diamond, and he decides to down bet to $20. This is also pretty good sizing for the most part, although he might want to size up a little bit more out of position. With backdoors and king high, I decide to call. The turn is the deuce of hearts. He checks. I decide to bet 60 now, sizing up a bit, and basically repping like I have a jack or some sets and two pairs that still play the flop. He makes the call, however, and the river queen of clubs. He checks. I bet 60, kind of trying to represent like I have a weak jack that he might just have to fold under pairs like tens through sevens but he decides to make it 260. i don't really think that he has better than one pair all that often here and so i think that for the most part he would pretty much be doing this as a bluff plus most of his one pairs are going to be jack x hands rather than queen x hands so i'm just not really buying what's going on here i think he might be capable of turning a hand like a jack tens nines eights into a bluff so i decide i'm going to put on my big boy pants and jam it's about 850 total, and he snap folds queen jack face up. I uh, I probably shouldn't, but I decided to show here. It kind of felt like my moment to shine, even though, to be honest, I would rather have him making folds like this when I take this line. It's probably going to be better for me, but my ego decided it wanted to feel good more than it wanted money. Um, yeah, I'm human, and that's going to happen sometimes. He actually congratulates me on the line, which I thought was very cool of him. He took it incredibly well for somebody who just basically uh, snap folded almost the top of his range and got shown a bluff. It's it's pretty rare to see, and to be honest, I was massively impressed by this. I felt especially sheepish for showing the bluff after that. In this next hand, we're playing 1200 effective, a double board bomb pot for $25 each. I have the boards from the footage, but to be honest, I don't really remember any of the action, but we have queen seven offsuit, and I don't know, I'm guessing something happens here. Uh, we can just watch. Uh, 
-hmm. It's hidden, so you, see it. <laughs> so you can't see it. On the Try and show you. Thank you. In this next hand, another straddle for 10. The cutoff makes it 20. The small blind, who's the player from the previous interesting hand who folded queen jack, makes it 130. And I'm in the big blind with aces. At this point, we've kind of battled back and forth. I think we can definitely get some action here. I four bet to 375. The small blind just calls and we're playing reasonably deep here, but there's just not that much money behind in this pretty big four bet pot. The flop comes perfect, seven three deuce two tone. Small blind checks and I need to decide on a bet size here. In general, I'll down bet these boards. I definitely want to leave him room to maybe do something kind of weird, play back at me, but also I don't really want to jam and force him to fold weaker parts of his range. When we bet small, we might even allow him to continue with some weird king highs, some very weak backdoors that he might have to fold to a jam. I bet 260, which might even be kind of on the big side to be honest, and he just jams. I double check my whole cards here because this is kind of a weird spot. I did say I want him to spaz, but it's not really going to happen that often. I do call off and he announces king high on the run out of runner runner flush. However, I show in scoop, he didn't have the right suits. In this next hand, there's a straddle to $10, and I look down in the hijack at ace king of hearts. I've opened up to $40, and the cutoff immediately on my left makes it $120. Folds back around to me, and at this point, we technically have an option between call and four bet, but for the most part, I'm gonna be four betting here pretty often. We're not playing super deep, especially given the straddle, so I like that option quite a bit, playing to always get it in. I bump it up to $350. The cutoff makes the call, and we go heads up to the flop of 953 Rainbow, one of my suit. At this point, I decide to continue and probably stack off on this board. We can apply a lot of pressure because his range is capped, whereas mine isn't. Now, some players who are a little more sophisticated might end up having something like a totally uncapped range here. They'll have aces at some frequency, kings at some frequency. But given I also have ace king, and most players aren't doing that at 2-5, I decide I'm just going to probably barrel off. Barring maybe a queen or a jack on the turn, that's going to be my plan. So I bet $320 here, probably a little bit big, something a hair under $300 would likely be better, but the cutoff calls. It turns the ten of spades, and while I normally might shut down on a card like this, it's one of those cards that kind of could give him a set. Maybe it's a card I would slow down on even with value. I decide that here, based on how he called flop, I just don't think he really has that much. I even think we might be able to get him off of a chop here. So I decided to jam, but he uh, gives us a little speech. All in. You can't fold. You got a pair? No. no. We're probably chopping, but I think I'm free rolling. Well, that's a good uh, outcome for me when you snap fall. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. It doesn't get much better than that. That's some fucking run good. <laughs> Let's look at that portal. Nice hand. Well played. We've chipped way up now. And we're sitting on 2.3k. There's a straddle for 10, and I'm in the big blind with ace queen of diamonds. It folds around to me. I open to 40, and the straddle makes it $120. I decide that at this point, this player on my left is capable, and he's definitely going to have some bluffs here, as well as some weaker value hands. I think calling is probably actually the best line, but in game, I just decided to rip it for his roughly 700 to 800 effective dollars, and he just finds the fold. In the next hand, we open 10 9 of clubs in pretty much one of the only non straddle pots of the night. We're in the cutoff and make it 20. The button calls, and the big blind 3 bets to 60. This is going to be a pretty standard defend for me, so I call. The button also calls. The flop comes ace, eight, seven, and the big blind c-bet 75. With open-ended, but an ace high board, I'm not gonna do anything but call here. The button calls as well. The turn is the queen of spades, which doesn't really change anything for us. I guess technically the nuts will not be our hand if a jack comes, but we're not too worried about that. The big blind c-bet's now less than what he bet on the flop, which is a little bit confusing. It's $50. I actually think there's some merit here to raising. We have some two pairs in range, some sets that still play flop, and we're multi-way here with a pre-flop raiser that's not really representing a ton of strength. We can probably get the button off some of the weaker ace -X hands, but I decided to just call here. Plus, I knew the river was going to come the six of diamonds, so I felt like I was going to be able to make more value. The big blind bets $50 once again, making it seem like he has specifically something like ace-5, ace-10, ace-jack that just wants a tiny bit of value and is afraid of a bigger bet. So I don't really love the idea of raising big here, but that's what I did in game because, hey, I'm human and I make a lot of mistakes. 
Try not to get in an uproar about it. Okay, I decided to make it 500, hoping that the button might have backed into a weird two pair or been slow playing from the get go. However, they both just fold and I think it highlights how a mistake like this can really cost you money. I probably should have made an additional 100 to $200 here with a different size, and I just didn't. Oh well. In this next hand, there's a button straddle for $10, and the cutoff makes it 40 With Jack-7 and Diamonds on the button, I decided to make the call, which is definitely a little bit on the loose side, but given that we're in the straddle, we get a much better price. The flop comes Queen-Jack-8 with two clubs, and I call $20. The turn is a Jack, and when he checks, I decided to check it back, getting a little bit tricky, because this is a player we've tangled with quite a bit. On a river, six of hearts, he checks, and now we have to bet. I go for a size of 165, thinking that he just might not believe me at this really kind of nasty size once again. He calls, and my hand is good. With a double board bomb pot, the last hand of the night, I'm sitting on a 2.3k stat. I look down at 9-6 offsuit, and a board that kind of connect, 8-7 deuce, an ace six deuce, there are some bets. Checks to be on the button. I decided to bet 75 into about 150 and the big blind check raises to 200. At this point, this player hasn't been too active and I think we should be just making a pretty straight up standard fold. However, I'm sitting on a pile of chips and feeling pretty good. I make a questionable call. The turn is a deuce and a three and it goes check check. The river, he checks and at this point I decide to jam for his about 500 total thinking he pretty much never has both boards after checking twice. He goes well into the tank, I mean, <laughs> and I think we can just watch Listen, it from here. It's the last hand. I got to do what I got to do. Maybe I'm trying hand? to steal. Maybe yeah. I'm not. Uh, I wanted to get in. Uh, uh, you see this dude? I'm being nice and tech, and he's going to I, under I, un I understand. I apologize, but here we are. <laughs> I don't know. You might still win, you know? You might scoop. It's funny. Oh the board I just you might scoop. Is that is that a call, a fold? What's going no, on? That is no action. Right That's now. no action? Okay, good. I, I don't know. I'm new here. I don't know what's going on. He has not, that is not I'm glad action. I didn't turn my hand over, you know? It's an attempt to persuade you to... Okay. You mean I got a call only to shop? Is that what you're trying to tell me? I don't, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't... I don't know. I don't know what your other card is. I don't know what my hand is. Just you know, it is what it is at this point. Okay, unless you got some weird. You gotta have pocket. I'll do your thing. Oh, I'm so tired, man. It just caught up with me. I can't even. I can't even banter anymore. It's, it's, it's over. You can't even banter. I have a long drive home, so you got it, son. Oh. I can't, I can't call. What do you have? What do you have? It's obvious you made a good call. What do you have? Are you, are you sure on. you want to know? Please, 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 please. Are you sure? You'll sleep better? Yes. Okay. Six then. So we got a pair here. A pair on the bottom. And that's it. So he made you pull the best hand. Nice! <laughs> Sir, you are... Give me a promo. A dumbass. <laughs> So wait, wait, wait. That's for you. Was that the bottom I, or the top? Part? I was open-ended top, but missed. I just had a pair so of sixes bottom. Right you would have yes. screwed. Oh! I asked if he wanted to know. Given that this was the literal last hand of the night, I believe they have to close legally at 2 a.m., which is basically last call. We decide to cash out because we got it. We don't got to go home, but we can't stay here. After getting into the game for 1K and then rebuying for 500, we're in for 1500, but cashing out 2543 and feeling pretty good. A profit of 1043 by my math, and minus a couple of tips for the excellent staff at Boston Billiard, and we're calling it a night. Unfortunately, I still had a long hour long drive ahead of me to get back home, but it's made a little easier by $1,000 extra in your pocket. Hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. Remember to check out Discord if you haven't so that you can have your poker questions answered or just hang out with a fun community and play with us on Poker 2 and Color Up. Hope to see you all in the next video. Take care and always remember, just triple.